I just, I literally just realized that I talked about 11 pals in this video and this entire time I thought I was talking about 10. Hello everybody, today I'm going to be sharing with you my top 10 palettes. Basically, if everything disappeared, these were the eyeshadow palettes that I would really want back. Um, and yeah, if I had to keep 10 eyeshadow palettes in my collection, these would be those eyeshadow palettes or pressed pigments palettes. This is a video concept that I uh, got inspired to do by watching Annette's Makeup Corner. She's been doing this sort of series on her channel in which she takes 10 of like a makeup category and she basically does an entire video on it. And this video in particular was called If I Could Only Keep 10 Eyeshadow Palettes. Um, what would they be? So I'll put it on the screen if you haven't already seen that video. Um, and I'll also put her channel on the screen. Video channel. So you can see what she's all about. So you can watch her if you haven't done so already. I love Annette. She is definitely a really talented creator. She does a lot of reviews on her channel. And if you haven't already uh, watched one of her videos, I highly recommend doing so. Off the top of my head, I could only like pull out five palettes that I felt were like truly ideal, noteworthy, flawless palettes. The other five palettes are palettes that um, I like certain colors from, palettes that I like certain color stories, certain formulas, etc. from. And I discovered when I was preparing for this video that yes, I have like those can't live without palettes that I absolutely love. And those palettes, um, I don't have a lot of them, but um, on a larger scale, I have palettes that I love certain parts of them. So I'm going to talk about that more in this video, but an example would be the Pinky Rose Cosmetics Bright Lights Palette. This is it right here. This was my first colorful eyeshadow palette and I was so so excited when I got this because I got this after watching um, Angelica Nickvist and Make Up Your Mind and they both like really um, gave this palette a good review and I was like, you know what, I gotta have it, I gotta try it out. And this was my first colorful palette. I was so proud of it. I was so happy with it. I used it a lot. Um, however, now I look at it and I'm like, okay, realistically, I haven't found myself using these pressed glitters. This palette has three pre pressed glitters and I haven't found myself using those that much. There are also some other shades in here that I don't use that much. For example, Brulee, which is like your like simple normal transition shade. I don't really use that shade that much at all and when I first got this palette I used to use Lit like a ton because if this was my first true matte yellow but ever since then I have encountered other matte yellows that I like more. So on the whole I love this palette still. Smash is my favorite color like hands down my favorite color from this palette and I use it a ton but there are like other colors in here that I really like. So like if I had to pick and choose Naturally, I have like some colors that I prefer over others. So on the whole, this palette is not my most used palette when it comes to a colorful palette, but I still treasure it as being like my first colorful palette that I absolutely fell in love with. Another palette that I would love to mention would be the Subculture palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. And the reason that I would want to keep this in like my 10 edited palettes would be because the color story is so unique and so many of these shades are shades that I literally cannot find in my makeup collection. Um, and I will say this, my makeup collection is not large. It is pretty sizable. Like It's bigger than you would expect a normal person's makeup collection to be, but at the same time, I don't have like 50 palettes. Like I definitely do not have 50 palettes. So more like 30 or less, you know, I don't have a huge makeup collection. But at the same time, I look at this and I think, okay, there are not a lot of shades on the market that I can think of that mimic a few of these shades that are present in this subculture palette right here. I am currently working on like trying to learn how to use it a little bit better. I'm working on finessing my skill with it, if you will. And it's a work in progress, of course, but I have used it in a few of my IGTV tutorials. Um, and so far, like I have really been enjoying it lately. And I think that color story is so unique that I would definitely want to keep that. Um, also, Melt Cosmetics Smoke Sessions. This is definitely a newer addition to my collection. Um, I did like a mini review video and I talked about this palette for a bit, uh, but look at how pretty it is. Like you have so many beautiful green shades in here um, and you have like your goldish, more olivey green shades in this area. And then like moving on to like your minty, cooler tone greens that are absolutely beautiful. And I mean, see the thing is like, this is such like, a unique palette in my collection that of course I'd want to keep it. And um, yeah, especially this matte 
color right here. It is absolutely stunning. I use a ton and I love it so much. It is beautiful. That being said, I would not want to let go of this palette anytime soon because of how unique it is and how um, much I love this palette. I just think it's amazing and I use it a ton. Um, also, Juvia's Place Masquerade. I have like a really weird specific reason for including this palette in this video and I'll tell you all about it. Um, if you open this palette, you have 16 shades. Some of these shades, in fact, a lot of them are neutrals. Um, other shades are super colorful. This was actually one of my first colorful palettes. I got this palette and then I got the Pinky Rose palette. So uh, this was like my starter colorful palette. And then this palette, like the Pinky Rose one, basically filled all of my colorful eyeshadow needs when it came to the matte section if that makes any sense. But this is such a pretty palette. I really liked it a lot. Um, something that really stands out for me when it comes to this palette would be the metallics. And the reason I would want to keep this in my like curated makeup arsenal, if you will, would be because um, so many of these metallics are so high quality. And here's the other thing. I have found that it's super easy to use any one of these metallics in my inner corner, which is something that I tend to do a lot with colorful shadows. And this is like weird, but like some matte, like some metallic formulas do not function well as inner corner colors. And it's weird to talk about that. And it's weird to like say it so seriously because you'd think that like any kind of like just metallic colorful shade would work just as well in the inner corner. But I don't know, it's just weird because like some metallics require a little bit more grip to function. Other metallics just require more layering. And if you layer too much of a colorful shadow in your inner corner, sometimes it can look a little bit wonky, but specifically like these two blue colors and especially this one right here. This looks so beautiful in my inner corner and whenever I want to spruce up any sort of look, I just use this in my inner corner and it's absolutely stunning. I love it. And that's like a little like small thing that I've noticed, but you find out these things the more you use a product and I have used this so many more times than I can count. And um, as a result, I feel like I like, kind of have an understanding of what certain colors are better suited for. And these metallics that are present within this palette are absolutely stunning. And I see them as being like super versatile shades. Let's talk about Blush Tribe. This is the Hasina 2. I mentioned this in like a video that I did a little bit ago in which I talked about like uh, the top three eyeshadow palettes in my collection. In that video, I was like, you know what? If all of my eyeshadow palettes dis disappeared, these are the top three eyeshadow palettes that I would want back as quickly as possible. I mentioned this in that video and that still holds true today because of just how unique, how beautiful this palette is. If you are somebody that is looking for a crash course in all things colorful and cool toned, and this is the palette for you because you have your blues, you have your greens, you have your purples, and you have a lot of good quality shadows in here. I absolutely love this palette. For me, like if I had to choose which, what in this palette I like best, the mattes or the metallics, hands down the mattes are amazing. In fact, for a long time, I considered this to be like my perfect purple matte in my entire collection, and I, I still think that that's the case, but like, I just love this palette so much. There's so much um, room for creativity in this palette and I just, I, I love it. I think it's beautiful. And I actually have a playlist full of videos in which I've used this palette or I've talked about this palette. So I'll try and put like all of these relevant videos in the cards. Uh, but if I don't put them in the cards, then you can just easily search it up on my channel and, and it will pop up. Um, speaking of palettes that I love, this entire video is filled with palettes that I love. Juvia's Place Festival Palette. This is such a pretty palette. I love this palette so much. I mean, look, you open it and you see nine pans of goodness. <laughs> like I have used so many of these shades countless times, obsessively. The only two shades that I don't use, like just 
all the time would be this salmon color right here and this mustardy color right here. For some reason, I'm not like a mustardy color type of person. I love mustard on other people, but for some reason, I just haven't been that person yet. Um, all these other shades I love. Um, this hot pink is one of the best hot pinks in my collection, and I'm very picky about my hot pink shadows. Like seriously, like I need a hot pink that is like saturated with color, but that blends easily, and this one does that, um, and so much more. Uh, this orange is beautiful, this red is stunning, this metallic color is so pretty. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious based on the fact that this is like a pretty messy pan of pure white metallic goodness right there. Um, I also love these shades right here. Like, there's, there's just so much in this pal palette to work with, so much room for creativity. I love um, mixing this palette in with like other palettes as well because there is so much like warmth in this palette, but then again, you have like that splash of coolness that makes this a great palette to pair with other uh, with other palettes to create really inspiring uh, color stories. So yeah, love this. And then more recently, I have managed to get my hands on this palette right here, the Tri palette, and I, I use this obsessively like i okay see here's the thing other people have like vanities you know like classy people they have vanities they have like dressing tables they have their top drawers i have my bathroom counter so if i like a product it doesn't leave my bathroom counter because i'm always using it um these two palettes, I had to find them on my bathroom counter because i uh use them so much that i literally keep them there because I cannot stop using them. And I love this palette especially. I um, have just gotten this so recently and it's just, it's a palette that I feel very committed to right now um, and I haven't even opened it, but this is what it looks like. I love this shade right here. It is so pretty. I also love this shade right here. It is very pretty. Um, this palette came out ages ago. I don't know why I'm buying it, why I bought it so recently, because I feel like we should have been together for a long time before this. I have another palette, by the way, that is um, here in this video for a very specific reason. I was thinking when I was like just preparing for this video, what if I hit my head again and I basically decide not to wear color and I need to wear neutrals? Or what if I have to look like a... Um, neutral lover not that that's bad but like what if you know like what if uh what is like the best palette in my collection for a neutral lover this one right here from kkw beauty and mario uh, this palette is the first palette that KKW Beauty launched. She collaborated with her makeup artist, or Kim Kardashian collaborated with her makeup artist Mario to create or to birth this child, um, which I love. Um, so yeah, this is a beautiful palette. Uh, you might look at it and you might think, okay, yeah, that's boring. Um, yes, it is on some level. But see, here's the thing. These shades are so high quality. They blend out so beautifully. Something that like really struck me whenever I first tried this palette out was how easy it was to blend these shadows and how foolproof they were. But what I use this palette for the most would be like the highlightery shades. Sometimes I like to put them on my cheeks, you know? And also this blue right here is weirdly one of the best blues in my entire collection. It really is. I love using it and um, yeah, like it takes... I think it definitely takes a lot of quality for me to basically like think in my head, oh yeah, I want a like a metallic mid-tone blue. And I instantly think of this one right here. Like, you, you know, it just takes a lot to literally like just open this palette and pick this blue, you know, because I like, if we are talking about blues, I have a lot of blues in my collection. This is definitely not the only blue that I have. And it's definitely the only blue that I have that is nestled in a sea of neutral. But the fact that I literally think about this shadow and I open this palette and I use this specific color says a lot about the quality of this blue. Speaking of uh, eyeshadow palettes, who knew? Uh, let's talk about this one. This is the Magic Palette by Juvia's Place. Ay, so pretty. Um, I love you. Sorry, I just like have like really weird um, feelings about some of my makeup products. Um, 
I don't want to talk about it. This is a uh, 16 pans of Absolute Beauty, um, and yeah, I love it. Julia's Place, by the way, has amazing formulas whenever it comes to their shimmers. Their mattes, really good. They're like shimmers and metallics, or rather, their metallics, the best. Well, some of the best in my entire collection. And that's what really attracts me to this palette because if you look at all these metallics, some of them are just absolutely stunning, like just jaw-droppingly gorgeous. Is that an exaggeration? I don't think so. Um, and yeah, I mean, like for instance, this gold color, like I have worn it all over the lid and it looks like molten gold and I love it. Um, also the silver color, same thing, just silver. This emerald, so beautiful as well. Um, yeah, there's just like so much to work with in this palette and I just feel like if I had to live without this palette, it would be sad. These two, last two palettes are so similar that I might as well talk about them at the same time. Boom, boom. Color Drain Vivid Pigments and Shadows palette, Morphe, and James Charles Pressed Pigments palette. I have spoken about the fact on many occasions that these two palettes are essentially alternatives for each other. So if you are looking for something that is super colorful and you're looking at the James Charles palette and you're like, okay, yeah, this is gigantic and I will never use any of those neutral shadows, this is a great option. If you're looking at this and you're thinking, okay, I would like something bigger, something that has more variety, this is a good option. You know what I mean? It's kind of like an either or situation. I wouldn't recommend getting both of these, um, even though I did and I'm very happy about it. But yeah, these are very similar, uh, very similar indeed. If I had to choose one, I would choose this one, but I don't want to choose one because I love both of them. Do I have 10 palettes in this video? One, two, three. I accidentally talked about 11 palettes in this video. That's just how it is sometimes. Annette, I am very sorry. I cannot do basic math. I don't know how I graduated high school. I don't want to talk about it. But nevertheless, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for watching me talk for um, however long this video was. I do hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting. And I will see you next time. Bye, guys.